All right, so we're replacing a water valve on an ice cream machine. Uh, the water here is kind of bad. So this has happened a few times. Um, basically, it controls the refrigerant pressure by the water uh, coming through the system. And the more the pressure increases, the more it opens the valve and causes the water to come through and uh, controls head pressure that way. So water pressure control valve. So we got that to put in, and then I don't know if we got anything else we've got to do. I've got so many freaking parts in here. So there's the valve, and there's what it looks like. I've had to replace these before, so we're going to do that again. And uh, kind of see what else we run into. I'm sure there's other things we've got to do here. There's always something broke, so let's go take a look and see what we got. Okay, you see where the ice cream comes down. Right now they're running sanitizer through it. Comes into the back of the machine. It's just, uh, as usual, a lot of things stacked inside of it. It's water cooled. Looks like they got new lines on this one, which is awesome. They got the good stuff this time, so hopefully they have less problems than what they've been having. That goes back to the walk in cooler and, uh, they keep that pipe cool, but we're bringing the cool air from the walk-in cooler. This is no longer approved by some uh, places, but if you're grandfathered in, they let it go. It's this one here, so all the same, same thing. So we're going to go ahead and pull it out. I guess it's just leaking water, so we'll go ahead and get that out of there. And this thing's been, uh, um, been treated hard. So I had to put Hot Shot 2 in this thing because we didn't even know what was in it before. You can see the accumulator here, that's what I'll call it. It basically boils off the refrigerant when they run the hot gas through it. It obviously was leaking, so I bypassed that. That was before me. The compressors are cranked in here nice and tight. Can't hardly get into it. You got, uh, you know, valves that just barely, I mean, look at, this thing has been ran hard. Very, very hard. So here's the valves in there right there. And, uh, so like I said, Stick on this side right here is hitting hard, real hard. It's uh, it's just a matter of time to let them shorts out. The compressor looks like it was changed. So that thing has worked that many years. And if you've ever counted and seen how many times these things run on and off, on and off, on and off, you'd be blown away. Either one of those is that warm. That one's warm. There we go. Yeah, by the time it comes out of there, it's usually pretty cool. So that's that's the mystical thing we're working on today. So I'm not seeing anything drip right this given moment. So I'm gonna play with it for a little bit and make certain that's what's wrong with it. Cause they ordered the part and said, "Hey, come change it." So that the refrigerant line comes over to here. Chances are this doesn't have a straighter for in it, so we'll either have to pull the refrigerant charge or try pinching that off, which I've pinched it before, which is usually what I try to do. So the water comes out of the machine, and for you people out there in California, you'll have a shit fit about this. And so the water just basically comes right down the drain. Now, the alternative to this is have a water-cooled condenser like on the roof where it circulates the glycol. Or you can do a pump and dump, basically, where we just pump the water through and dump it down the drain. If you're on a uh, on a uh, well, or if you're on some place that has cheap city water, it's not a big deal. Otherwise, it can get kind of expensive. So it's kind of wasteful. It's usually uh, two gallons, something like that. I think a minute, maybe a little more. I'd have to check the book. I forget. I'm going off geothermal. Geothermal is usually uh, one and a half gallons uh, per ton. And uh, so I forget exactly without looking it up, but it's it, it's a considerable amount according to just people that pay a lot of money for their water. So, and I'm seeing what looks like it's leaking out of there down there. So I need to call the guy and talk to him. Oh, there it is. There it is, it's leaking out of the out of that area there. So I'm gonna pop this back off. Those belts are looking a little bit bad. They do their own maintenance on that, so. But then deal with that. Let's see if we got a freaking nut deal there missing. It usually goes up there. 
So here's a better look at the valves. Basically, you just crank them in or out to adjust your head pressure to maintain whatever head pressure you want. And uh, nothing fancy. Let's see if we can find out where it's leaking out of here. All right, so we found out which one it was. It's that one over there. When you come down to here, you can see the water and stuff that is leaking off of it. So we're gonna get that off of there. Um, need to follow that refrigerant line there and see where it's going to. It looks like it. Boy, it's surprising that hasn't leaked. Yeah, it comes over there, so now we have to go on the other side, which is not really easy to get to. Literally going to tear whole, all three sides off this machine to get into it. Things have changed so much over the years. Crazy amounts. You can come over to this other side and see. I marked these so you can find them left and right. And when you come down to here, you can follow that refrigerant line that goes to there, which also splits off and goes to high pressure reset. So if the water don't run, it shuts it down. That refrigerant line goes right there up to there so we could try pinching that or we can pull the charge which I think holds about two pounds um, if I remember right this thing has leaks you can just see the rough rough work that's been done on this thing so yeah let's go ahead and get that uh, let me figure out what I want to do here Part of me says go ahead and pinch that thing, that way you don't have to screw with the pressure charge, so I think I'm going to do that. I think I can get in there pretty decent on it. I've got the unit off, so it won't run. I can probably pinch it about right there. I've got two different tools. Uh, the Imperial 105FF, which I have a link to this down on my Amazon toolbox down below. And then these generic ones here, uh, Yellow Jacket made a pair of them. But I had problems with these sometimes not pinching things off very well. So like if you, you can see there you have a little bit of a gap. And when you think of the thickness of the uh, copper, it usually doesn't do too bad. I'm going to try these today just because it's so hard to get in there. When you're doing these, you need a little more room. Nice thing about this though is it re-rounds it. However, if you're using your Nipix pliers with the... Uh, like the crescent wrench style, you can actually squeeze it because all we need to do is get the pressure through. We don't need crazy amounts of flow like you would for a liquid line or something like that. So I'm gonna probably go ahead and go with these here. They've been doing a pretty good job. These are some cheapies I found. These have been really good. I'll be honest with you, these have been halfway good. So let's go ahead and do that. If it don't work, I'll pinch it with those, but this should be fine. Now, something I definitely strongly recommend. I usually am not a big Harbor Freight fan, but things like this you just can't get wrong. These are the Pittsburgh automotive hose clamps, uh, pliers. These things work really, really good. Um, if you're working on ice cream machines, these things will pinch water lines off, uh, mix lines, you name it, and holds back beautiful. So I've had these things since uh, 2017. I always date my tools, which seems weird, but it... Uh, helps me keep track how long the tool lasted and stuff so we're gonna go ahead and get that on there and then that way I don't have to shut down the water on all the other machines and they can keep on running so we got it off there and uh, works pretty good um, there's some major pressure behind this thing and we'll be chopping that end off there because you can tell it's been split so we'll go ahead and get that redone when we do it a lot of hokey pokey going on here a lot of homemade repairs so We'll just keep on doing what they've been doing. That's not a barb fitting, I don't think. It looks more like a some sort of first generation PEX fitting, or whatever. Okay, so it came undone. Just used a right angle tool, got in there and loosened that up. Got it out of there, but the um, fridger cap tube there is wire tied, so it wouldn't vibrate into stuff. So, gotta pinch that thing off yet. We'll do a little rigmarole. Oh, actually, that should work out just fine. Depending on which way they get this in there. Usually, I like to see it on the outgoing side. Because that's usually how you do it on geothermal. But we'll uh, get it set up so it lets it flow through. I guess that's my positive side, so the flow's got to come that way. So, yeah, it works out well. So, it's probably 
yeah. Probably was wired in wrong to begin with, but for the most part, there's two philosophies. Either keep it under pressure all the time, that way it's always got water on it, which should really be the outgoing side. That way there's water in that evapor or in that uh, condenser, or let it drain out, but honestly it really should be water in the condenser, so when it kicks on, it's uh, got some in there to absorb the heat before it uh, kicks on, so whatever. We'll uh, see if we can figure out which direction it's what. It's a little hard to tell much of anything right now. All right. You see why that's a little easier to do than the other type. It gets in there a lot better. So we should be able to get a backup wrench on there and get that thing done in. We'll bleed this off to make sure it's completely pinched. All right, so we went ahead and cleaned up the inside of that bell because you can see how bad it looks. We also got the back side fairly decent. Got these fittings taped up, I should say. Got my sheathing here on my tube. I'm going to bring it through here so it's a little less likely to be such a pain in the butt and it won't rub through on anything. And um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the fact that it's been like this, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be going on the outside of the unit. Um, it's worked this long. Why change it now? This thing's already ready beyond being replaced. So we'll... Uh, Put it back the same way it was, otherwise, I got to repipe everything. Uh, they basically got them, you would think it's backwards, but they've been keeping like this forever. It's one of them judgment calls do you change everything for what reason? So let's keep on trucking. So we've got that on there, got room for gauges for when we need to hook up our gauges. We can get in there and screw on that, and we can let that set there like that, it won't rub through. I'm gonna hook my service dials on there and make sure my head pressure control is set correctly. Got everything hooked back up here and mounted up. Everything's good there and then once it's running I'll know whether that flare fitting is going to leak or not. Ended up adding a little stem here to that so that I can get onto that. The uh, It's such a pain about to get into those old burgers. So she seems to be holding good around 100 degrees. And our sight glass, not that you should charge off of it. It's staying full. Our other side looks like it might be just getting a little bit low, which wouldn't surprise me. This thing's got leaks in the coax coils, I believe. It, uh, they're very, very small, but because of the age of the machine, it's not really worth sinking a lot of money into it, which is why they bought the other machine off of us. Um, and uh, that's been a better investment, though, a lot less problems. I thought it was low, but I was looking at the wrong side glass. Like I said, you don't want to charge by that. But um, I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail on a lot of this stuff because it's very proprietary uh, as far as learning it. And, you know, there's very, it's very limited on what you can find out there on information. So. It does not appear to be leaking. I think I might go ahead and valve it back off because it wasn't low. Um, I thought this was one of the ones that was leaking more readily. I got everything soaked. I don't have any leaks from what I can see there. And it does not look like we're leaking anything down in here. So we're looking pretty good for the aging machine. So and I'm going to let them know about these belts. They're starting to look a little bit... Uh, a little war, but they, they keep a pretty good idea or a pretty good uh, eye on that stuff. So, and that's about it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and go on to this next machine over here. That's got a, a control board that they want to change out because it's cycling too often. They already changed the sensor and they order their own parts and just uh, have us put them in sometimes. It just depends on what it is. So, we're gonna go ahead and get that put in now and uh, double check for any wires that might be rubbing into things because man, it. It happens with these machines. It happens quite often. Alright, so we went ahead and changed that board there because it had some cycle rate problems. So after I went through all the trouble of trying to program this thing and then checked out the cable and everything else and actually checked pin by pin to my keypad membrane and all that, the board they bought on eBay um, ended up not uh, being exactly the right board. So the uh, part number of the board and a few other things didn't match up so 
there is something for anybody out there that tries to get parts online, be very leery about buying them from places like eBay or online because you might be thinking you're saving some money, but unfortunately they just bought this board and it's worthless. So um, basically now I've got to sit there and take all this back apart and put the other board back in and uh, just was a total loss. All this here is unplugged right now. You don't uh, want to get any of this live. And even then, you got to make sure you're you're um, completely grounded out. So, other than that, uh, guys, uh, this one here ain't much to show. It's just a it's a uh, freaking milkshake machine with a blender on it. So, um, I appreciate you guys taking a chance to look at the video. If you guys enjoyed it and you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. Uh, we're on Facebook under HVACR Survival. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. So here I am getting one of the other machines ready at another place. We got the U431 i2, and we have the U431 pre-turbulation. So um, went through, looked for leaks, uh, checked the belts, changed a couple contactors up here. This was probably one of Stoning's biggest pain in the butts out there. So we changed on that one, that one. These ones here, they may look a little bit pitted, but they're really not. This is for the, this one's for the uh, drive motor, same thing with that one. Then the compressor, uh, the compressor ones are mainly what I changed. We're gonna order some new uh, day and night controls here, potentiometers, those are out of whack. You can pick up some crazy resistance readings on it and stuff. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we checked the belts. Went through, looked for some leaks. These are water-cooled, pump and dump. I sold them some extra contactors for later, uh, and, and that's what I use today. So I had those setting here. Um, believe it or not, those actually worked out great because these are 24 volt, where the other ones are usually 230 volt. Um, got that in there. Checked the uh, mix pumps back here in the back, made sure that those aren't all wore out. So we're basically right now kind of wearing off this rough edge because this is an old machine. You can see right there where kind of I get this stupid thing to focus you can see the sharp edge here and it tends not to want to pull out of the machine stainless does not focus for crap there you go that one's not horrible so what I'm doing is kind of and yeah here's the new machine even uh, even this new machine here has got some wear already and they lubricate these things but they still wear out so Using the old handy dandy file and kind of just rounding that off a little bit uh, so that maybe it'll pull out a little easier. And then we're going to get her together and make sure everything comes down to temperature. That way it's good to go. And uh, that way they can open uh, next week. So that's uh, that's what we're doing here on this one here. Just basically doing some preventative maintenance, which is always smart to get done in advance. So um, that's about it. This old beast here, uh, I'd have to look up the date, but this thing's old and still going great. So about it for this one guys.